name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and older. So this is part two of Cannabis and Creativity, um, what did I name it? <laughs> update on art I don't know we'll find out once I put the title on there <laughs> but um, in part one I was showing you a few of the creations that I'm working on I showed you one of the creations that I it's finished and I'm gonna put on my Etsy shop and another one that's already on my Etsy shop that I'm gonna show you so it's I'm holding it in my hand but let's let the suspense mount on that and I'll show you what I'm smoking. I'm smoking a joint, uh, a king size uh, raw joint from Raw Papers, consisting of sugar shake. And this is the sugar shake that I use. Is that my tray over here? Okay, here we go. This is what the sugar shake looks like. It's mostly it's mostly buds and, and little tiny buds and leaves, and uh, some some stems in there. And that's what sugar shake usually is about. It's like the, um, when you harvest your cannabis plant, if you grow cannabis plants, and then at the bottom of the plant, there's little buds and, <clears throat> and tiny leaves and all that stuff ends up becoming a part of the sugar shake. And if the leaves are very sugary and coated, trichomy, then it's going to be a very, very potent sugar shake. So, um, and it can be really good to bake with. If it's not all sugary and trichomy, then you can bake with it and it'll still be strong. So, But yeah, that's what I'm smoking on inside of this joint, a sugar shake. So, let me find my lighter. Oh, straighten up my legs here. I did was doing a lot of walking yesterday, so I'm feeling it. Um, so cheers to part two. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <coughs> <coughs> here it is. So, this is inspired by, um, Vodou inspired by the Gide. Um, and, uh, they're one of, they're very powerful. Um, Loa, Loa, L-O-A is a, is a name for God or God, gods or goddesses. And um, after I finished creating this piece, that's what I knew automatically. This what that's what this was all about. So let me just tell, say this right now: <clears throat> when I create art, <clears throat> I'm in a trance-like meditative state. So I feel like the knowledge of my ancestors is coming through the art that I create, no matter what it is. And usually, it comes out the most strongest when I'm creating art that is. What, I, what I've been calling stream of consciousness art, where I'm not having a complete plan of what to do. I'm being led, you know, led to those materials that I need to create this piece. So that's what happened with this. Um, it's a recycled uh, Mod Podge jar, I mean jug, that I washed out and cleaned and everything. <coughs> I paper mache it, the whole body. And then I had to paper mache this head. And the head is made out of a stone that I found from the ocean. I painted it uh, with acrylic paints as well and mod podged it in certain spots. And and then yeah. And then I signed it on the bottom. So yeah, this was done in twenty sixteen. So quite a quite a way away, huh? <laughs> quite a ways away. <laughs> Yeah, that was done about, about three years ago, but it's still holding strong, and I have him on sale in my Etsy shop right now. And you can use him as an altar piece. You could put him in the middle of your kitchen table <clears throat> as a protection piece. Um, very powerful, very powerful uh, energy that is infused into this doll. Because when I create, it's all my energy going into each creation. So it's not just like 
do 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 I just made some art. Here you go. It's so much more going on. So all the passion and the love that I have for creating this and all the other pieces that I show you on these shows goes into it. And people have said they can feel it. One lady said she felt it coming right off of the doll when she held it or whatever. So <clears throat> it's all my blessings to you. And I encourage you to explore your creativity. So I'll put you over here to the side here. Yeah. I think I might want to show you one more thing, and then we'll cut it for the second part. But yeah, um, thanks for joining me. I hope you guys are enjoying it, and I hope that you feel free to share. Uh, uh, hope you feel free to share your creativity with me, um, wherever that is. Like you can email me and say, "Hey, look, I made this and that," or "Hey, I look made this," um, and maybe that'll inspire you to keep on keep on keeping on with whatever it is you're doing art is so much more than people have have even realized throughout the years I think they're realizing that more now because the indigenous people were really tapped in to what creativity was all about and what it did for their community for them as a people as a whole on this planet it made them much healthier being much healthier to get along with to communicate a lot better <clears throat> when you're able to do something that releases stress and inspires others and heals people as well. Art is such a fantastic thing and so is cannabis and that's why art and cannabis are very very much alike. and then I'll show you the last piece that I want to show you that's available on my shop and then I don't conclude this two-part show so catch part one if you didn't <laughs> you thought you can get away with me not saying that but guess what <laughs> so you can decide to come back with two pieces that are available on my shop instead of one <laughs> so uh, this is one that I recently showed on my Instagram Twitter and Facebook but she's a winter solstice winter solstice witch pretty much um, very fancy <laughs> with the bird wings kind of like a, gives it like a, a I don't know it kind of feels like a elfish kind of vibe queen of the elves or something the dark elves she's the queen of the dark elves <laughs> but I had a lot of fun making this piece because um, I incorporated bird feathers in it and it was a challenge figuring out how to use the bird feathers onto this type of surface so this is basically made using this the head itself is a, a wine cork that I recycled <clears throat> and I painted it and then I uh, had to paper mache it onto this bottle which is a recycled Mod Podge bottle and after I did that I paper mache the whole bottle and put and painted Christmas trees on here. Um, you call them winter solstice trees. But the, the the history of the Christmas tree is a fascinating thing in itself, for sure. Um, which I've talked about on this channel during the holiday season. Talked about the the history of Santa Claus and all that. Where that come from? The red and white, tied into Amanita mushrooms and those indigenous people, how they would deliver the Amanita mushrooms, dropping it down people's chimney. So, um, Santa Claus is derived from that, from that story, from that, uh, from those happenings back in the day. <clears throat> so, um, very fascinating to me. So yeah, um, she's on sale on my Etsy shop. Free gift with your purchase. And I like this. It's, uh, it's very lightweight. This one isn't heavy at all. There's nothing inside of it, so it's very lightweight. You could put it on your altar during the Christmas season. You could put it on your kitchen table. <clears throat> uh, put it anywhere that it's it'll stay clean. <laughs> Don't let kids 
walk, run around with it and play with it because it's not a toy. So, or your dog or your cat or whatever. Um, it's definitely not a toy. It's a labor of love. It can be an altarpiece. It's an art doll. It's a spiritual doll. It's meaningful. <laughs> so, it's available on my Etsy shop. And it was a lot of fun to make. Um, I do get excited around that time of the season during winter, winter solstice season. Some people call it Christmas. Um, but the energy does shift and change a little bit during that season. I noticed that. Uh, it's definitely different than the summer season. So, yeah. That is definitely on my shop. So, if you want, check it out. Uh, get a step in the right direction. Have Christmas in uh, August. <laughs> Don't care what people say. Just put it up even if you feel it. <laughs> But yeah, usually I don't I don't put out Christmas stuff during the summer. I don't usually do that. But thought I'd do that today, you know, and see if anybody's interested. So here's the other doll and the final one. Um, this doll was a lot of fun to make because, uh, as I said, um, art can be very expressive. It can be a way of communicating how you feel. And if you can't get your feelings out <clears throat> in a constructive manner, do it in a constructive manner. Be productive about it and uh, make something that expresses how you feel. And this is how I was feeling at the time by making this. <laughs> I was not in the best of moods. And sometimes you can make some really trippy stuff when you're not in the best of moods and you express how you're feeling. And this is how it came out with this two sided doll. Now it's a two sided doll, I mean, it has two different people one body pretty much so you get two dolls in one and recently this woman on Instagram told me that this doll looks like some I think it, it could have been in a horror movie it should be in movies or something I'm like yeah okay for anybody's out there watching who's a movie producer of horror movies or whatever feel free to contact me <laughs> I'd love the exposure but yeah um this definitely took some while. It took a while to do. It didn't come together overnight, um, because you see how all of the details and things that I had to add. I sculpted the face with uh, fabric first, <clears throat> like the bulbousness of the nose and the eyes and the brow ridge and all that and the teeth. All sculpted using um, fabric first, and then I painted it with thick applications of acrylic paint on there and. Um, Amazing what happened. The texture, you know, like I said, the texture is what makes it more three dimensional. The only thing I didn't sculpt with, um, the only thing I didn't sculpt with, um, with fabric was the eyes. Now, the eyes are actual, they're like these black beads that I found on the eyes on this side, and then I just painted them and sewed them in to the fabric. So, that's the only thing I didn't use <clears throat> that's that's not fabric so but yeah I like this doll a lot um, she's not extremely heavy but she's got some weight to her <laughs> um, you can just prop her up wherever you want to prop her up um, great for great for Samhain season you can prop her up in your window keep off ward off bad folk <laughs> keep them away that helps <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to be, um, <laughs> I'm going to be giving away a free gift with this one too, a free handmade gift, so, you know, match, whenever I give away a handmade gift, I try to make it match what it is that you've bought on my shop, so, yeah. So feel free to check out my, uh, the description below and you'll see <clears throat> all the many places that you can see photos of this doll. And where you can purchase her as well on my Etsy shop. She's on my Etsy shop right now. And as I've said before, if you want to purchase my art off of my Etsy shop, all you have to do is contact me via email. And I'll be able to um, tell you how to do that. So, and my email address will be in the description below as well. So yeah, definitely look at the, vi the photos that I have on Instagram of this doll. <clears throat> that way uh, you get even better... Uh, idea of the detail involved with making this doll so 
Yep. It's fun stuff. <laughs> this is the doll, and I think I mentioned it when I showed this before. This is the doll that um, was uh, marked as uh, not safe for Facebook. <laughs> I got some sort of warning on Facebook, and it's like, wow. Really? This is really something that needs to be someone needs to be warned about? I think kids have seen scarier things than this. And what is kids looking at my Facebook for, you know? Maybe parents should be watching their kids. I don't know. That's just something I think. <laughs> but anyway, that's all that I want to show you today for what I've done, I've made. Um, I hope this inspires you to cre be creative and share whatever it is that you create with me. You can put in like a photo in the comment section below. You can email me. You can follow me on Instagram. And you can say, hey, check out my Instagram. Would you not just order me to check out your Instagram, but it's like, I have an Instagram and I have some of these like recycled fabric art stuff that I create too. Would you like to see it or whatever, you know, however politely you can put that. And I'll go to your Instagram or Twitter or Facebook and check it out. So if we share with each other the creativity that we have within, <clears throat> then this makes it a more harmonious place to live in. So. Alrighty. So with that said, thanks for subscribing to my channel. Thanks for the likes and shares. And thank you for your kind comments. Leave your comments down below and let me know what you're creating with recycled and upcycled fabrics and materials. Um, don't forget, you get a free gift, free handmade gift with every order that you place on my Etsy shop. And thanks for joining me, guys. Brightest blessings to y'all. Stay creative, and I'll see you soon. Catch part one.